Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amber J. And I do have another word for you guys. The word is coming from the Lord. Um, actually, I have a vision and a word, right? I have both of them. Um, the vision came to me, uh, say about three or four days ago. And then um, the word came to me yesterday, uh, something that the Lord wants me to do. But before I get into that, I do want to give you guys a little bit of background about me. Um, whenever you get on, you know, you, you listen to a lot of prophetic voices on YouTube, um, <clears throat> They always say test the spirits, but we're not giving them, we're not giving you guys anything to test. Like we're not putting ourselves out there. At least me, I'm guilty of it. I don't know about other people, but I'm not giving you my background. I'm not giving you my credibility as to where as, uh, or, or why I am in front of you. Right? So let me just start off like this. I always knew I had a calling all my life, all my life. As long as I can remember, I had a calling. Um, I was just so sensitive to the spirit. It's like, I knew God It's like, he just, he took me in. Even at such a young age, I knew I had a great revelation about God and who he was. Um, I was raised by my grandmother, very spiritual, uh, Christian woman, um, Pentecostal. She, uh, had us going to the Kojic, you know, Church of God in Christ Church. And so, you know, the the roots of Christianity were definitely within me, right? Um, as I got older, I was still searching, you know, I started to, you know, um, not be around my grandmother as much. And I was searching for God. I was searching for God. I was searching for God for a long time. Um, and... It wasn't that I couldn't find him. He was always with me, but it was just that the uh, noise of the world was so loud. I guess you could say I was looking for my quiet place with the Lord and I couldn't find it. I was looking for my quiet place with the Lord and I couldn't find it, right? So after a while, I started to listen to the sounds of the world and I rebelled, right? I turned against God and um, let me just speed things up because... And then talk, we can talk about this another time. Um, lo and behold, the world chewed me up, spit me up, because that's what it does. It's no friend in the devil. Um, and it, it, when I say the devil, I'm, I'm not talking about, oh, out there doing witchcraft or um, out there doing uh, Wicca or whatever. I'm just talking about not living for the Lord. There is no friend in, in, in worldliness at all. It won't have your back in times of trouble, right? So I repented, right? And then I went through thing after thing, you know, just um, reading, rebuilding myself and redefining myself as a young woman in Christ. Eight years ago to this month, it was August, uh, April of 2014, I got my first job working in ministry, right? And I was so elated. I was so excited because to me, this was like the pinnacle of my repentance. This was like, I am fully reformed. Now look at me. I am working in church. Like, you know, I was really happy about it. <clears throat> and that was in my hometown. Uh, Lo and behold, God would have me leave my hometown and move to um, the Houston area. Now, I moved to different areas within the Houston area, and I always went to like a local church. And I was always active in the local church. Like whatever church I was, it was like, yeah, I'm not here to play around. I'm not here to, you know, just sit up here and be a seat filler. I came to work. What do you need me to do? That's That was my stance uh, always was whenever I, you know, would move and then, you know, join the local church. Um, and then finally, like, it was just, it just wasn't working out. And I said, you know what? You, I can always go to Joel, right? I can always go to Lakewood. And I know a lot of people talk bad about Joel. A lot of people talk bad about Lakewood. But from um, a person who don't know where to go, like, if you don't know, if you haven't found a local church, you know, and you live in the Houston area, you know you can go to Lakewood. I mean, it's so big. Like, who who's pointing you out? Like, who's... It, it's just so big. Like, you could just go. You could just go and get the word. You can just go and get, be in the presence of the Lord and just walk out and go home. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's somewhere to go. And, um... <clears throat> And I know, you know, a lot of people, like I said, they got this and that to say about Joel, especially that Hurricane Harvey thing. And I'm going to say this because I said it many times and I'm only going to be fair. If you live in the Houston area and you you know about the compact center, you know you have to drive underground 
to get to get in there. The compact center is the new Lakewood Church. You know, you have to get underground to get parking. So, you know, I've always thrown that out there because a lot of people um, didn't know that about, you know, Lakewood Church. And they were just saying things like, Joe um, closed his doors during a hurricane. And just, he didn't, I wouldn't open my doors. I wouldn't put you through that. Why would I direct traffic underground in a hurricane, in a flood? That makes no sense, right? So that was just a little bit tangent, but... And that's just a little bit of the iceberg of um, me working in ministry. And as of right now, I still go to Lakewood and I do serve in ministry there. So there you go. That's a little bit of a overview of, you know, um, my credibility, right? So now you have something to test. Now you can be like, okay, well, she's just not a person on here that's trying to, you know, just do upload videos and this and that the other. No, I work in ministry. I, I've been working in ministry for eight years now, okay? And I'm serious about my salvation. But let's get to the reason why I'm making this video, okay? I'm making this video, um... Because no one the Lord told me to. He put the idea yesterday I was driving. I was on my way to Sam's Club, I want to say, or TJ Maxx. And the Lord put this word on my heart. And he wanted me to teach about the book of Ruth and how to get your Boaz. And I was like, Lord, that is not a message I would teach about. Because why would I want to teach a woman how to get a man? Like, this, 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 to me, that's the stuff that the world does. Like, women of God, we don't do that. But as he began to break it down to me, I was like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. This is why we got to be obedient first. Okay. Oh, but anyway, so um, that's what I'm going to get into. And the, and the scripture that um, came to me that really um, encouraged me to move forward with this word is actually from Luke 22, 32, I want to say. And this is when Jesus uh, returned to Peter and he says, Peter, when you are, um, when you are converted, go back and strengthen your brothers. When you are, when you have overcome something, when you have come out of something, don't just click your heels in hooray because you have come out of it. Go back and strengthen the people who don't know. Okay. So that's why the Lord wanted me to give this word. Cause yes, I know that, but a lot of you guys may not know that a lot of you guys may not know that you do not go after a man. You know, you, you just don't do it. And when I say don't go after a man, you, you, and it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to come and chase you. No, God puts the both of you together, right? God does all of the work. You just have to be obedient. You just have to re remain a lady and be at the right place at the right time. You know, and when a man sees you and he sees that you're a woman of God, he he, he will drop everything and, and he'll just know it'll be his innate instinct to go after you. Right. And so whenever you try to go after a man, it might throw him off. It'll be like, oh, wait, this ain't part of the. This kind of feels funny. So remain calm, remain a woman, um, remain a woman of God. Um, and, and it's up to us to show you how to do that. Right. Finally, I'm like eight minutes into this thing. I, I try to keep it short. I try to keep it short. I'm going to keep it short, okay? I'm going to do a, um, uh, I guess, uh, a four-part series. And I'm breaking down the book of Ruth. And this is how to get your Boaz, right? This is how to get your Boaz. Now, let me just say this before I get into it. Because it's going to be really short, honestly. <clears throat> Ruth finding Boaz was a small part of her story you finding your husband is a small part of your story okay so i just wanted to throw that out there it's just a small part of your story all right so i'm going to break it down in four parts because there's four chapters in the book of Ruth. so i'm going to go chapter by chapter and i wrote what i'm trying to mention down excuse me so um the first part is that um, whenever you read the book of Ruth, okay, so let me just give you a background. Uh, Naomi husband moved from, uh, I forget what it was in Israel, and he, uh, I wish I had my Bible in front of me, and he moved to Moab, right? Um, they live in Moab, and then they have two sons. These two sons married two, married two Moabite women, right? Orpah and Ruth. Then the two sons of Naomi die, which leaves Ruth and Orpah as widows, uh, of course, and they are stuck with Naomi. 
Now, at this point, Ruth, uh, excuse me, Naomi, she wants to go back to her, go return home. She wants to go back to where, you know, uh, her home country. So, um... I just want to catch you up to speed here. The first thing in order to get your Boaz, the first thing that Ruth did was Ruth repented. Ruth repented. We know that Ruth repented and it was a real repentance because she was given the opportunity three times to by Naomi to say, no, you stay here. You know, stay here um, with your own people. Naomi was saying, what can I do? I can't even, I can't birth new sons. You're just going to be waiting for me. You know, and although at that time, whenever you read the Bible, all three women are crying and they're hugging on each other. It's a very emotional um time. Um, Orpah originally, you know, they were all going to go forward and, uh, <clears throat> with Naomi. But Orpah's repentance was on an emotional base. Because when Naomi went into... um. <clears throat> When Naomi started to say things like, um, you, I, I can't give you more, I can't have more children. Um, and even if I did, what are you going to do? Wait till they grow up so you can um, start to have children. She's like, no, go live your life. Whenever Naomi started to give these bits of reality to the two women, Orpah then jumps out of that emotional conversion. Orpah jumps out of her emotional conversion, and I guess she starts to think of, think to herself, like, yeah, if I leave with Naomi, I am going to lose my life for sure. So Orpah stays um, in Moab. Ruth said, no, ma'am. She said, your people going to be my people, and your God is going to be my God. I don't care what I'm leaving behind. I don't care what I have to give up. I don't care what I have to sacrifice. I want change. So the first step <clears throat> into getting your Boaz is to really repent. And that's what Ruth did. She didn't repent out of convenience. She didn't repent out of emotion. She truly repented. And um, <clears throat> I also wanted to say this as well, you know, because um, when I was really starting to really um look up Ruth and who she was. Some people were saying that um, she was actually the daughter of a king, um, um, a, a king of Moab. And, you know, so just think about the magnitude of what she had to give up. She gave up everything. She gave up the false gods. She gave up um, hierarchy. She gave up a lot, right? Um, you know, all to, to, to change. She didn't know what was on the other side of her change. So she didn't change in order to get something. It was all about sacrifice initially. She was just tired of being that way. She was tired of that lifestyle of serving those false gods. There was no mention of Boaz at this moment. She didn't. She wasn't doing this for anybody. So the number one step in order to getting your Boaz um, is to truly repent, truly convert, truly let God be your God. Have no consideration of what you're giving up and have no consideration of what you're going to get. In this moment, serve the Lord. All right. So I'm going to come to you guys tomorrow with part two of how to get your Boaz. And hopefully by the end of this, my goal by the end of this is that you have a better perspective of what it is to be a Ruth. Okay. Um, you guys be blessed. Um, if you want to go into the Bible and study it on your own, I always encourage that. Um, I don't want you to jump ahead of anything. If you can, if the Lord leads you, so be it. But definitely, Ruth chapter 1, Ruth repented. Okay? So your first step is true repentance. Look, oh, thank you, Lord. Um, I really don't want to go too far uh, into this, but I had a moment of true repentance. Right? And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It was... It was Let me say this. It wasn't, I been truly repented, right? But I went even, even further because I realized some things were holding me up. Some things were causing stagnation in my life. I went into prayer. I went to spiritual warfare. I started praying, rebuking, binding the devil in the name of Jesus. I mean, I'm doing old fashioned style stuff like old grandmother walking around the house at three o'clock in the morning, rebuking and binding, putting all on everything type stuff. Right, I'm throwing out all kinds of jewelry. I'm throwing out all kinds of clothes. I'm getting rid of it because if it had a, even an inkling of idolatry, if it had a, even an inkling of worldliness, I got rid of it. Okay, so um, 
I guess you could say that was like a Ruth moment for me. I just started getting rid of everything that resembled the world because I wanted to get closer to the Lord. I wanted to, uh, there was a hindrance. There was something blocking me. And um, once the Lord opened up my eyes about what was blocking me, it was like things I was letting in my house, music, all kind of stuff. I just took the next level up and I said, God, no. I don't want this stuff. I want to get closer to you. So if it's something that you have to get rid of more than it's going to be something you got to get rid of. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's going to be something. Take that up to prayer with the Lord and ask him, God, what is it? What is it that is stopping me from walking a better walk with you? What is it that's stopping me from hearing you clearly? You know, what is it that's stopping me? He is faithful and he is just, and he wants to show you these things. He wants to bless you. Okay. I can't think of not one good parent who doesn't want to see a smile on their child's face. And God wants to see a smile on your face as well, okay? Once again, um, we repent it. Y'all be blessed.